good day and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at adding a model to our application. The model we're going to add is for the comment. So you remember the last video we had it in road for comment. And so now naturally we should have some way of encapsulating all the details about um, for a comment. And that's usually what your model does. It encapsulates all the detail about an entity right, or an object. So we're going to see how to do that in this video. So let's jump in where we left out the last time we had just added a comment route to our application you can see I'm sitting near the route and um, I can go back and then you know uh, type that um, path and switch to this route the comment route to be added to our application you might be thinking now why would we add comments to our to-do list application uh, who would be making comments well it could be us but Imagine that we wanted to make our to-do list a more social application where we can invite our friends to register um, as user on the application. They can manage their own to-do. Everybody can manage their own to-do as a user, but also you can optionally, optionally share a to-do or a set of to-dos with someone or a set of people, and maybe then people would want to make comments on the to-do. I mean, instead of changing the to-do itself, they might want to make comments on it. So let's imagine that that sort of thing that we wanted to do. Um, so we've successfully had it the route, like I said, but one of the next thing we might want to start thinking about is how do we manage a comment? And for now, if you look here, we have this, just this array of objects and, you know, we have these properties on it, ID, subject, and order. Um, of course, there's no indication here which to do, which to do a particular comment is for. But we probably we should put that down in each to do. So what I'm proposing then is that we need to add a model. And similar to the to do model we have here, where you can say what which properties are valid for a to do, we should do the same thing for our comments. So we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna use the generator to add a model and then we'll um, just modify it. So let's just get started. So we're gonna do, um, so I'm sending in the code directory, yo ng full stack and um, model, and then we're gonna call it um, comment model. And then we're gonna say that feature um, is to do, so we wanna put it in to do feature. All right. And so if we do that, we'll see that it creates client dev to do models, comment model, and then it tests thing, which we really do not care about the test right now. So I'm going to, again, just like how we did it, the controller we had, I'm going to delete this for now. Um, there's no arm in leaving it, but uh, I'll, I'll remove it. Very sure that we're not really using it. So here's our model, and I click on my model. And this is what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is actually cheat a little bit. I'm going to expand this, and I'm actually going to split my screen. And on one side, I'm going to um, look at the to-do model, and then I'm going to do some copying from it. And so let's give ourselves some more room. So here's um, ours. It looks very similar. The comment, so we're going to call it um, comment that's our model and think of it like our entity and here again um, we're going to change this to comment that's a much nicer name than comment model but anyway so there we go plus this wouldn't work with the dash in it um, it would cause some problem for um, JavaScript, it looks like there's two properties, some two variables, and there's a sub subtraction. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, this looks very much like this. Um, so we want to put pass in a comment object, um, which we're going to say, um, you know, this that name. We don't want a name. We need this that ID is equals to empty string. Um, what else do we want? We want this that subject. Is equal to empty string on a new uh, model. Um, this that um, author is, you know, also an empty string. And finally, we also want to have the uh, to do, um, the task. 
task ID, okay, is null or whatever, empty string. That's fine. Let's just do it strings for now. And then we want to do this ng extend our object, ng that extend this object with whatever fields were passed in or properties were passed in, in that in this guy. So that kind of connects our stuff up and the ones that weren't passed in, well, they would have already set them. And then um, do we have a minimum length that we want um, for like the subject? Yeah, we should adapt that also and have like a minimum length for our subject. And so why don't we just copy all of this? And so yeah, there's the comment that, you know, prototype for is valid. And um, instead we will do this guy here. We'll paste this and we'll make this comment and just returns comment there. And we'll say, you know, prototype that is valid is a function. So remember what I showed you do classes in JavaScript in like two videos back. So comment, which is this variable is a function. Essentially we, we've created function here. We said that prototype that is valid. This is a function we're going to add to the prototype of this um, function, um, constructor function. And we're going to declare a variable and it says ng if defined this is a to do method. So we're going to do this that um, subject, we want that to be ah. Man, what am I doing? Uh, come on. Subject, that's subject. And um, uh, let's see. Is define ng that is defined, and uh, we want that. Uh, we want author. Um, so let's see. And I want this to be ng that is defined. This that author. I want author to be thing and ng that is defined is that to task ID. So I want those three things to be def defined and all those three must be defined. In terms of, well, maybe when I pass it in, the author, um, when I create a new to do, I know who the author, I know who's using the application so I can populate that field and uh, so I know for which task it's being created for. So um, yeah, so maybe I don't need to specify this when I pass in. Um, yeah, actually I wanna check and see if it's valid. So it should have that. That's not when it's passed in. But anyway, so it's a string, um, find uh, this, that uh, subject, jeez. Uh, subject make sure that's a string um, it's big enough well if it's defined and it's a string if that's true then we can check and see you know if this that subject that length is greater than equals to the maximum length we define which is five character so or to do should have at least five character or to do subject and so that's if that's big enough that's true then we could return is defined and um, is big enough. Well, actually, we already check in is defined and is string here already. So when we call is big enough, so just calling checking is big enough is really all we need to return. Um, but this makes it more explicit. Do you see what I mean? So is just by calculating is big enough means that though these two things would have to be true, which means it would have to be defined on a string in order for you to calculate this. Else, if those two things are not true, you'd get false. So in returning, if it's big enough, you have already checked if it's defined and if it's a string. So you really don't need to um, recheck call that again. All right, so I think this kind of gets us 
to where we want to be with our comment. So then we return our comment. Okay, so that's fine. So now we can actually, oh, of course, if we remember from our last thing, we need to go index.html. And so I'm going to close this guy off. I'm going to close this um, to do comment um, M and I'm going to say to do that models that comment model I think it's called which is this file okay so I need to include that too I'll just add hash over here, I don't know what that's about, but I'm going to leave it. All right, so that now um, includes our new JavaScript file, and of course, Angular now knows about it, and so I can definitely inject this, um, the comment, into our controller. So um, comment, um, have that injected, and since I want to inject that using this array syntax, I'll have to do comment, so that when things are minified, uh, it doesn't get replaced, okay? So now that I have that, now I can do, um, you know, I can use, uh, I can create an array of, um, so I can do new comment, get passed in this object. So now I'm passed in that object to populate If you remember, let's review that when you call the constructor function comment, which I'm going to pass in here, um, and you said new comment, you're passing it, you're going to create, um, you're going to pass in this object here, this object. This object has ID as a property, subject, and author. So when you come here and you create a new comment, you pass, remember you return a reference to this function, so when I call new on it, and I pass in those objects, these properties on the function is going to, on that new object is going to be initialized to empty string, but then ng extend is going to extend this object with those properties. So right now, if we just go with this example, we're only going to have these three properties extended on it because we are not providing the task ID in our thing here so we can say for example task ID is this is the task one this is a task task ID task three and this is for task ID the task with ID five for example right and so now we pass that in um, expected whatever um, okay so um, I don't know what the message is about. So I think that's it. And now if we should rerun this, it should work fine. So it shouldn't be breaking our application, that's for sure. Um, why did this go there? Okay. And it looked like it's still working. Um, so I'm going to hit return and it still works. And I can verify that it's work by going to the comment here and then I want my subject to be, you know, let's say um, bold and bold and then this to be italics. And then this to be italics. And then maybe I want to put in square brackets the C that task ID. And I want to say something like so. Let's just see if this works. Let's sit there, let it save and refresh, and there we go. All right. So I want to prove that um, the changes we made actually work and work on true. So now we have a slightly better application because now um, we have 
a way of encapsulating our comment into a model. And that's good for us because we want to always try thinking about writing, you know, more robust application. And now we can do things like just send a comment to the back end, validate it, and so on. Either validate a comment that comes from the back end or one that we get from the front end. That's it for this video, how to add a model to our application. In the next video, we'll continue by adding a data access object. It's sort of like a service, but we'll see how to do that and we'll explain it. Oh, thanks for your attention, your time. Spread the word, keep watching, try out the videos, leave comments. Take care. See you again in the next video.